Deku, I think he's some pro. By clouds. My head in the clouds not coming down. Chapter 90. Public Perception. Tragic Hero. In ancient times, long before quirk or even modern conveniences were even imagined, there was a trope in Greek theatre about a tragic hero. It was a character who had high potential, and who should have had the world in their hands, but fell from grace because of their own hubris and tragic flaws. Is there any other way to describe Endeavour's recent downfall? A press conference earlier today revealed that Darby, a serial arsonist and member of the League of Villains, to be Toya Todoroki. Endeavour's oldest son was reported dead almost ten years ago, at the age of thirteen, but that is obviously not the case. It remains to be seen whether that story was a cover-up by Endeavour, or whether he, too, genuinely believed his son was dead. Even if that is the case, however, it begs the question, how bad must a father be that his son, so grievously injured that he should have died, would choose to recover on the streets rather than returning home? Sadly, though, this doesn't come as a surprise. After Endeavour's defeat by Stain, and with his track record, it was only a matter of time before the evidence became too much to ignore. Which is why his arrest, which a year ago would have been the only newsworthy story for two weeks, was completely overshadowed by that of his son and his band of murderous misfits. Hero arrests always make the news, but Endeavour was never truly a hero, was he? I thought you were supposed to be resting. What are we supposed to do with you, Deku, when you won't even take care of yourself? Nizuku winced as Sir Nighteye's voice carried through the hospital. I feel fine, Nighteye. And, and look, I'm in bed. That means I'm resting, right? Nice try, kid. He raised a huffed. He seemed more tired than usual today. But he had evaded the question when Izuku tried to bring it up. You realize we all saw the article you published, right? Taking down the former number two hero does not count as resting. Oh. Izuku blushed. Uh, I mean, it was just an article. It's not as if I was walking on my broken leg or anything, so I don't think that should count. It's still mental work, kiddo. So yeah, it counts. Mr. Oak ruffled his hair. If Shinso broke his leg, would you want him brainwashing people left and right? Izuku sighed in defeat. No. But scolding aside, Mr. Brave grinned. That was pretty cool. Brave. What? Brave shrugged innocently. Kid gets kidnapped, turns his captors on each other, somehow rids the world of, like, the worst villain to ever live, then turns around and takes down an abusive hero the next day. You can't say that isn't cool. Don't encourage him. He raised a hiss. Yeah, Joke agreed. And I think you're forgetting that All for One's death wasn't intentional on the kid's part. Be sensitive. Oh. Brave glanced towards him. Right. Izuku balled his fist into the sheets. He wasn't a good person. I know that. But the worst part is that I led to someone's death and... I didn't even care. At the time, I was just thinking, better him than me. Does that make me a bad person? Iriza's hand on his shoulder was grounding, and Izuku let a few tears drop as he felt his heart squeeze. 
Kid, I think it's probably high time we got you some therapy. I... Izuku started to protest, then stopped himself. He was going to be a hero. They learned in rescue classes how traumatic things like kidnapping or hostage situations could be to civilians. So, what made him think that he was better than anyone else at handling this? If it were Katsuki or Uraraka, Izuku would obviously encourage them to get some help, at least for the first couple of weeks. So, what made him any different? He took a deep breath. I think you might be right. So... Togo leaned over the couch while Ochako was watching TV. How's the big bad media taking the rescue? Surprisingly well, Ochako sighed. Better than they took the kidnapping, at least. Togo's face twisted in disgust. I can't believe they were blaming him for getting kidnapped. He literally sacrificed himself to save everyone, and they were acting like he was some damsel in distress. Super uncute. Yeah, well, some people are just prejudiced. Ochako slumped back. I don't get how Deku deals with it every day. I would snap. Toga nodded somberly. I would definitely stab someone. I'm just glad we're in the dorms and he doesn't have to take the train anymore, Ochako said. There were just so many times he would come in, casually saying that someone had given him a death threat or told him that he would never be a hero. I can't even imagine. I guess it's a good thing Deku's so strong then, huh? Toga shrugged, and jumped over the couch to sit next to her. Maybe that's why you like him so much. What? Ochako stammered. I, I don't... I mean, how did you... Togo giggled. It's not a bad thing, Ochako. Having crushes is super cute. And Deku's a cutie pie, so you picked a good one. Ochako sighed. I don't know. Even if he likes me back, which isn't a guarantee, we're both so busy being heroes. Toga sat up, so that she was nose to nose with Ochako. You're never too busy for love. You're just scared, but heroes aren't cowards. Get it? Ochako leaned back, eyes wide. Got it. Togo smiled, fangs on full display. Good. Now let's watch a movie. The news is so boring. Mr. Compress looked around the room, wondering why they'd all been gathered. Well, not all of them. Muscular and Moonfish hadn't been invited to the little rendezvous, but then again, they hadn't agreed to give blood to the vampire and turn coat on the league. Shortly after Compress had been led here, officers had arrived, leading Spinner and Mustard, who had been dropped off, with little explanation. They'd simply been told to wait for the heroes, who had an offer for them. What do you think it is this time? Mustard asked. They already arrested Shigaraki, and all for one is dead. So what else do they want from him? I don't know, Spinner said. But the ones we've been meeting with seem like true heroes. They're trying to save people, not accumulate worthless glory. I'm glad you think so, Nezu piped up from behind them. They jumped to their feet, to see the principal of UA smiling at them. They hadn't even realized the door had opened. The razorhead was standing in the open doorway, and the boy standing behind him could be none other than Deku, the one they were supposed to kidnap 
and ended up saving instead. Well, Compress said cautiously, if I had known there would be a party, I would have worn a nicer coat. Nezu chuckled. Then perhaps you'll have to come over for tea another day, so we can see it. That'll be pretty hard to do, seeing as we're going to prison and all. Mustard rolled his eyes. So thanks, but no thanks. Actually, the commission is a little more lenient when they're desperate. He raised a head, rolled his eyes. And with everything that's been going on, they're giving the green light to things without reading the full terms and conditions. But that's their loss. So let's talk. Compress glanced between the heroes in confusion. I am afraid that I find myself a tad lost from my observations. The commission did not seem desperate to save a quirkless student. No offense to young Deku here. None taken, Deku said. If they hadn't had a team of heroes pushing to save me, the commission would have probably been happy to make me a martyr and let people keep thinking that quirkless equals useless. That's partly why I need to thank you. Without your help, it would have been much more difficult for Toga to enter the League's hideout undetected. So, thank you. I owe you my life. Mustard looked shocked, and Compress could have sworn that Spinner was blushing. Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just what true heroes would do, right? Like Stain Toward. Exactly, Nazu said. However, the Commission is not necessarily fond of the place that Stain has taken in the hearts and minds of the people in Japan. That's where you come in. Really? Mustard snorted. I doubt they'd like a bunch of villains any more. But you're not a bunch of villains. Deku smiled. At least, not according to public perception. My kidnapping was better news than your capture, so your information was never released. And as for his followers, you know Stain's ideology better than anyone. Spinner looked at him suspiciously. What are you getting at? Deku's smile got wider. Society needs to change. We all know that, but you've read the articles I wrote. Murder isn't going to be enough. The fight for a true hero society can't be fought with knives and swords. Nezu nodded in agreement. To win hearts and minds, one must be prepared to use words as weapons. So you want us to what? Mustard asked. B be the face of a new ideology, Deku said. Uh, but really, it's just a repackaging. Keep the portion of Stain's ideals that makes society better, and spin it so it sounds like it's coming from the civilian side, rather than villains. It'll make the changes seem a bit more conservative, and get people on board. Basically, the plan is for you to become social media sensations and popularize a rebranded version of Stain's ideals. Eraser explained bluntly. Who knows if it will work, but it'll count as community service while you serve house arrest. Compress exchanged glances with the other two, before grinning. Then let's put on a show. Chapter 91 Reveal Toshinori felt lost. Mirio had ordered Ramen to celebrate their nemesis' defeat, which was a sweet gesture. And there was something surreal about sitting here in an empty classroom, eating ramen with his protege as the sun set through the windows. But it just felt... Perhaps empty was the best word to describe it. Or maybe hollow. It didn't feel real, or anything like what he'd expected, that was for sure. 
and it didn't even feel like the first time he'd assumed, incorrectly of course, that all for one was gone for good. The first time, he'd been busy recovering from his injuries, and he had taken the symbol of evil down with his own two hands. So, even if he had the time to process it, it would have felt real and complete somehow. But he hadn't been the one to take his nemesis down, and it hadn't even been Miria. No. All for one had been taken down by his own hubris, and the people he'd seen as mere puppets in his plan, with one very important catalyst. Izuku Midoriya. I used to be quarkless, you know. Toshinori broke the silence. Before I met Nana and received one for all. Mirio set down his spoon. I think you mentioned that. Toshinori nodded absently as he played with his food. I had the dream of becoming the symbol of peace, but I couldn't do that without a quirk. Or at least, I thought I couldn't. Now I'm not so sure. It would have been more difficult, Mirio acknowledged. But just because you've got an amazing quirk doesn't mean you're any weaker, All Might. You're still an amazing hero. Toshinori smiled sadly. Thank you, my boy. But I'm not sure that is entirely true. I took the easy path. And you took it well, Mirio insisted. You've done a lot of good, All Might. Sure, maybe you still could have accomplished all your goals if you stayed quirkless like Deku, and that would have been super awesome. But just because you received a quirk that made your life easier doesn't mean you didn't have to work hard to get where you are. You're the symbol of peace for a reason, All Might. You might have made some mistakes, but you're working on them and stuff, right? That's what being a hero is all about. Making the world a better place. Starting with ourselves. Toshinori chuckled. <laughs> you always know just what to say, don't you, my boy? Mirio shrugged. I mean, there's a reason you chose me, and it's not just because Sir told you to. You liked that I could be happy and bring hope, right? Toshinori sighed. I'm just... Wondering if I should have passed it on at all. It's obviously not as miraculous as I originally believed, if all for one could be taken down by any old... Whoa, stop right there. Mirio shook his head fondly. Just because Deku is quirkless, doesn't mean all for one wasn't strong. One for all is an amazing legacy. Deku's accomplishments don't discount that. Oh. Toshinori blinked, then rubbed the back of his neck and chuckled awkwardly. I suppose I'm falling into those old biases again, aren't I? Yeah, Mirio shrugged. But you're trying, and that counts for a lot. Now, come on and pass me a little more rice. We're supposed to be celebrating. <laughs> yes, we are, Toshinori laughed. Yes, we are. Emmy hadn't said anything since she arrived. The minute she'd gotten to his apartment, she'd taken off her shoes and brewed them both a cup of tea, and then simply cuddled into his side, browsing her phone as he finished up with the last of the paperwork from the raid. If someone had asked him a year ago if Miss Joke was capable of being silent, he would have called it a logical ruse. But maybe that was why he'd been so afraid of falling in love with her. Because then what happened if his thoughts and inner conflicts were loud enough to be overwhelming all on their own? He missed Oboro. He missed what he'd had with him and Hizashi, and mourned that loss already. So, having it all shoved in his face again, this time turned completely on its head, 
felt like having a rug pulled out from underneath him. It was just like when he thought that Orbital was cheering him on, only to find out that he died. Except he hadn't. Not really. It sucked. We don't even have him back. The thought slipped out of Shorter's mouth before he could stop it. He's changed too much. An awful one messed with his brain. He's not the kid I knew anymore, Amy. Amy sat up and grabbed his hand. I know, but are you really ready to give up on him? I know I never got the chance to know him, but from what you and Mike have said, he sounds like a really great guy. He was. Shota said helplessly. But he's been a villain for the past ten years. The Orbital I know wouldn't have done that. But you said it yourself. All for one messed with his brain, Emmy said. Maybe now that he's gone, there's a chance you can get your friend back. And what then? Shota asked. What if we do get him back and he's still different? What if I'm different? And we just don't fit together easily like we did back at UA. Amy cut him off by squeezing his hand tightly. Then you'll find a way to make it work. We're not a perfect match, are we? And we still found a way. Shota rolled his eyes. You mean you found a way? You just kept attacking my walls head on until there was a large enough gap for you to squeeze your way in. It was a war of attrition. Amy giggled. <laughs> okay, maybe. But still, give it a chance, sure. If not for your sake, for his. Or Mike's. Why do you have to come at me with logic? Shulta groaned. How would we even begin to find out how much of Kurogiri is still Oboro, though? And how much was all for one? Well, all for one isn't the only person we know with the habit of messing with people's brains, Amy said playfully. Shota narrowed his eyes. If you're making a joke about my logical ruses. Amy snorted. No, you're not that good. I was thinking about Shinso. Shota sat up straighter. You think he could brainwash all for one's influence out of him? Amy shrugged. It's worth a try. Besides, the kid is getting too good at jokes and pickup lines. He needs something to keep him out of trouble at this point. Shota smiled and slumped against the couch. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Amy gave him a sly smile. I already did. He'll be at the hospital at noon. Good luck, sir. Psst! Deku! Come here! Murodaka's voice coming from his balcony made Izuku yelp and jump off the bed, hitting the floor with a hard thud. He rubbed his tailbone as he hobbled outside. Murodaka! Is everything okay? Is there a fight somewhere? What's going on? Uraraka yelled and grabbed his hand. It's not an attack, silly. I just wanted to show you something. Do you trust me? Izuku breathed a sigh of relief and relaxed as Uraraka activated her quirk on him. Y yeah, I do. Where are you taking me? Oh, not too far. A razor head would kill me. Uraraka gave him a big grin, and a few warning bells went off in his brain. It's just the roof, so stop being such a worrywart. Izuku frowned. Since when do you call Aizawa a razor head? 
He trailed off, and his eyes widened as he saw the rooftop. A blanket was laid out, with candles and what looked like pints of ice cream, and Nuraraka was already waiting for him. She turned around, and when she heard him gasp, she said, Deku? I was starting to... Oh. Toga giggled as she let go of Izuku and gave him back his gravity, before shifting back into herself, grabbing a rope from behind a planter to cover herself up. You two have fun. I didn't know what kind of ice cream you guys like, so I got strawberry for Otaku, because you're so sweet, and mint chocolate for Deku, because it matches your hair. Have fun on your date. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Uraraka glanced in with panic eyes and jumped up. Toga! Wait! It was already too late, though, since she'd already taken a vial from the pocket of her robe and downed its contents shifting into Hagakure and disappearing as the robe fell to the floor again. The only sign she'd left was a door closing behind her, the lock echoing across the roof as it clicked close. Both Izuku and Uraraka ran to the door, only to find it locked. Dang it. Izuku frowned. Do you have a hairpin? I left my lockpicking kit in my room. Uraraka shook her head. I was wearing a ponytail today, so no. Um, I guess the grappling hooks with your costume? Yeah. Izuku huffed. We could use your quirk. Uraraka grimaced. Uh, kinda overdid it during sparring earlier. So, possible, but it wouldn't be pretty. And the ice cream would probably melt by the time we both got out of the shower. Izuku matched her face. Y yeah, maybe not. Uh, so, how did Toga get you? Uraraka blushed. Well, I thought she was you, and... She said she had something to show you on the roof. Izuku sighed. I didn't even question it until we were already in the air. Well, I guess I'm glad you trust me so much. Muradaka giggled. But, uh, it kind of got us trapped. I was always going to give you detention for getting kidnapped again. Izuku shot her a playful glare. Don't forget you'll be right there with me. I'm with you right now, aren't I? Izuku's eyes widened, and she looked away. Uh, any idea what Toga's goal was with this whole logical ruse thing? Now it was Izuku's turn to blush. Uh, I'm pretty sure she said it was a, a date. I'm, uh... Uh, not really sure why she thought that. N not that I don't like- I do- I mean- I- I don't. I mean- I'm sure it's just faster if I jump, right? That'd be the quickest way down. Uraraka laughed. Has Toga been teasing you about having a crush too? She's been trying to get me to just grab the bolt by the horns, but uh, I guess she got tired of waiting. Yeah. Toga isn't very well known for her patience, Izuku agreed. Then did a double take. Wait, did you just say crush? Um, maybe? Uraraka huffed, and her face filled with determination. You know what? Yeah. Toga already spilled the beans anyway, so might as well just face it head on, right? Deku, I like you. Izuku gulped. Oh. Uraraka nodded. Yeah, and if you don't feel the same way, then that's fine, but no! no! Izuku waved his hands frantically, 
I mean, yes? I mean, anyone would like you. You're smart and pretty and a really good fighter and... Wait, does this mean I should call you a chaco now? Or does that come after ice cream? Ochako blushed and ducked her head. You can call me Ochako if you want, Deku. I... I think it's cute. Okay. Izuku's mouth felt dry, and he had no idea what to do with his hands, so he ended up just gesturing awkwardly to the blanket. Uh, so... Shall we? Ochako giggled and grabbed his hand, pulling him down onto the blanket as she sat down. We shall. <laughs>